Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to continue our journey from uh, Garrowbridge Railway Station all the way up to uh, South Brent or as it was known in its railway day Brent Station. Please hold tight. We've taken off from uh, Bolton Airfield near Solcombe and we're now flying up the Avon Valley and approaching Garabridge Railway Station. This is filmed in 2020, so the uh, station's down below and now is a private residence. But we'll fly around, have a look at it. And here you can see how it looked several years ago from Google Earth. Uh, disused and closed, but uh, quite a nice picture. We'll continue on round, having a look at the station there down in the valley. We'll move back in time now to the 1950s when the steam engine were running and the uh, camping coaches were in the sidings. Our final 1959 feature returns us to those glorious summer days of our youth when the sun always shone and is the second of three intermediate stations on the line at Gara Bridge, where the camping coaches visited in 1958 are seen to the right. This was the only crossing point. In the days before package holidays became a taste for overseas travel, many people had their holidays in the United Kingdom. And the holiday paradise was the West Country, billed as the English Riviera by the Great Western Railway. To this end, the railway provided holiday accommodation of its own to supplement the hotels and boarding houses of Torbay, Newquay and St Ives. At a number of small wayside stations, redundant coaching stock was parked in sidings and connected up to local services, the resulting camping coaches providing very cheap holidays at a time when youth groups and schools were first arranging holiday programs. Many boys were loco spotters and, of course, were the target audience of the railway roundabout programmes. A holiday in a railway carriage was thus something very special, complete with loco spotting. Gara Bridge was an intermediate station on the Kingsbridge line in South Liverpool, close to where the signal on the right gave access to the camping coach siding. setting for this much-loved Devonshire branch line as it approached the last station before Brent, Avonwick. Opened in December of 1893, this station was between the villages of Avonwick and Ditford in no man's land really. While small, the building had its own booking office, waiting room and small goods shed, but in its later years was relegated to an unstaffed halt. Today the station has been converted to an attractive private dwelling, owned by Bob Gale, who we shall hear from later. On our journey into the archives of time, it was evident that some enthusiasts had made it their lifelong ambition to preserve part of our local rail heritage. Here at Avonwick we were pleased to meet Bob Gale, whose time, resources and energy had been expended in the restoration of the old GWR building to its former glory as a lovely dwelling house. We asked Bob about the purpose. How can you reject me so damn easily? Who are you and what are we? Baby, baby, so the station. Really I bought it for just 
under £5,000, complete with six acres of land. It was in a very dilapidated state. The railways had been gone for seven years. The line prior to that, it was an unmanned halt for seven years. So we'd had 14 years with everybody could come down, thieve everything that they wanted to thieve, dump everything that they didn't want, and leave us quite a nice mess. And that that they hadn't done, the blackberry bushes did for us. So we came in, we bought it, and my main concern was I wanted to keep it. Being a Great Western man, owning two Great Western steam engines, I wanted to keep it as a Great Western station, but at the same time, bearing in mind, I've got to live in it. So it's got to be a nice mix match between the two. And I think that we've achieved it. We've, we've kept the platform there. with the canopy and everything looking like it was. Unfortunately, when we came in, the canopy, where we've got now the nice barge board cut to the Great Western design, was all corrugated iron. That was the first thing that we took off and threw away, and I had those made. One pound, 10 shillings each and there's quite a few of them so that was one of the most expensive things we then went to put a damp course in it because we couldn't find one so i had a thousand pounds worth of damp course put around it bearing in mind that that's now nearly a fifth of what i paid for the building we then having got the damp course in we then started to do the renovation and we took out the floors had six foot depth underneath them and they were wooden so i wanted to take those out and put in solid floors what the, the first thing we found was a nice three-quarter inch pitch damp course. So there's a thousand pound I've wasted. But we, we carried on, we converted. We finally signed for it in October, but British Railways on the basis that if I walked away from it, anything that I did was to an advantage, allowed me to come in and they allowed me to start work. And start work we did and we worked constantly with me commuting between here and London. And we moved in the following May. Well, when we came in, I mean, a lot of the do doorways, we've put windows in, some of the walls we've knocked down, some of the where there were walls, we've put doors and vice versa. But what I will say is that we threw nothing away. All of the doors that we took out were put into doorways that didn't exist and are still in the building to this day. The windows, they didn't exist, they were gone. So they, they were made new. And again, we've, we've tried to keep them in line with how the station looked when it was built. But bearing in mind that, of course, because living in there and being as close as we are to the river there, it really suffers with damp, we've double glazed. And there were two lovely sliding doors in there. One unfortunately had been so badly damaged and was eaten away with dry rot that we just had to throw it away. But the other one, we, we made into a feature and, and, and is used as a curtain. I must be the only person that, that heaves across one major door, and I call major, to draw the curtains. When I become old, later, whether I'll be able to pull it across is anybody's guess. But no, we've thrown away nothing. Yes, we've collected a lot. A lot of people have come down and given us a lot. We've, people have given me the last day train tickets. We've got some of the signs that were further down the line. There's also a lot of Great Western signs in there that weren't there. I've been transport orientated. I have collected a lot in my time and most of them are still in there now to this day. So we've had to bring the telephone in, we've had to lay the water on, we've had to do the main drainage. And these, when we moved in, weren't done.
of a Wick station house is known throughout the UK and Bob and his wife receive curious visitors regularly but only by appointment. The importance and indeed magic of our railway heritage lives on in the hearts and minds of those dedicated to its preservation and this is so evident here in this area where there are still remnants of the old Kingsbridge branch line. John and carefree holidays were easily available, or so it seems. In rural Devon, on the southern border of Dartmoor, the Great Western's West of England main line spawned a number of branch lines, of which that to Kingsbridge, at the head of the Salcombe River estuary, was perhaps the best known. Our last shot the branch is back at Brent, with the main where a palm tree sums up the Great Western's image of the English Riviera. Well, thank you so much for uh, staying with me to the end. I hope you enjoyed the uh, journey up to uh, up to the end of the station here, where it meets the main line at Brent, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next episode. So stay safe, stay alert, and cheerio for now.